Have you ever wondered what it takes to make a multiplayer first person shooter game? I spent the last two years researching and creating my own netcode solution from scratch in Unity and well, there's a lot that goes into it. Most first person shooter games use what is called a client server architecture. This is where all the players in the game are connected to one central, usually powerful machine, which is used to control the multiplayer world and ensure that all the clients receive the data necessary. The server sends data such as the positions and rotations of the players and objects in the world to each client and the client then replicates the state of the game on their own computer. This means that the players are actually just dummy versions that are controlled by the server. This can lead to synchronization issues when things go wrong, but generally this is the best approach. I use Unity for game development, and as I was trying to figure out how I was going to go about tackling creating a multiplayer game, I found that a lot of the solutions for networking were just too confusing for me. So I did the only logical thing and created an entirely custom solution from scratch. I'm still not really sure why I decided to do that. After making this bold decision, I found some good tutorials by Top on YouTube which helped get a basic networked game up and running. I'll leave some links to his videos in the description. I ended up with two versions of the game. One was the client, which would be the version that is distributed out to the players, and the other was a headless server version that would be responsible for managing all the multiplayer aspects. I even created a nice editor tool in Unity that allows me to seamlessly switch between the two and perform some other useful functions regarding the server and client. Now I was able to move some players around in my scene and have them update for all the players. Nice. In comes the first problem. You see, when sending any data over the network, it takes time for that data to get from point A to point B. It must travel down miles and miles of cables to get here. This is called network latency and creates a multitude of issues. The first problem we face is that when a player moves, they send their input over to the server and the server will move our player for us and send back the new position. But if we were to delay this action, it would feel very sluggish and would make the game pretty much unplayable. But wait, why are we even making the server move our players? Why don't we just move the player on our own client and tell the server where we are in the world so the server can tell the other clients. Well, because of cheaters. Essentially, when making any game that has a player versus player environment, we must assume that any player could be trying to cheat and must mitigate it best we can. In this case, it would be preventing things like teleportation or speed hacks, as the client could just tell the server they're moving faster than they actually are. Instead of relying completely on the server to set our player's position, we can instead predict where the player should be locally first, meaning that when we press a key, it will immediately be updated on our screen. We then send our inputs to the server, which can perform the calculations regarding movement and send our actual position back. When we eventually receive this position from the server, the client can then compare the two. If they match, we can continue as normal. If the difference between the predicted position and the actual position is greater than some threshold, we must assume the client's position is wrong and force the client to the correct position. This is not done by directly setting the position though. Instead, we take the last position the client has verified to be correct and then reapply all the input commands since that verification, hopefully giving a correct result this time. This part of the process is called reconciliation, or more commonly referred to as rubber band. So now the server has all the correct player positions, and a hacked client can try and modify this, but it will not be reflected to other players. There's more to a multiplayer game than just the players though. How do we manage all the dynamic objects on the network? All the objects that need to be synchronised are saved into a world state. This would include things like positions, rotations, health and inventory data. These world states are then packaged up into a network packet and sent over to the client, where a packet is essentially just a binary message that can traverse the internet and be received by the client. This whole process of packaging up the state of the world and sending to the clients happens at a frequency set by the developer, which is known as the server tick rate. Some common tick rates vary between as low as 10 ticks and as high as 128 ticks. The tick rate simply denotes how frequently the state of the world will be sent and received. If you know anything about networking, you might be thinking how it's possible to fit all this data about the world into one packet. Compressing the packet with a lightweight compression algorithm is not enough to trim the packet down to a small enough size though. Instead of solely compressing the bytes of our world state, we can instead calculate the difference between two world states and only send the new data to our client. This form of compression is called delta compression and works by first tagging all the world states with an ID. When a client receives one of these world states, it makes sure to tell the server the most recently received world state ID. Generally this is done by adding it to the client's input message. The server can then track which the last received state was and use that to find out what new data needs to be sent over to the client. This can chop down the data sent drastically, as if nothing is changing in the world, we only have to send very minimal data. If I turn the tick rate down to around 20, you can see there's a very obvious problem. You see, the issue with a fixed update rate is that it's not going to match the client's frame rate. It will usually be lower than the client's frame rate, and therefore the client will see this jittery movement on all objects. When handling games that have a lot going on, such as a survival game, having a high tick rate will put a lot of stress on the server, as it will be calculating these world states tens of times per second, which is a pretty hefty task to compute. Instead, we want to drop the tick rate as low as possible, and then interpolate between the states to give a smooth appearance. This works by buffering the incoming world states on the client by a set time, and then selecting the two most 
most recent states that fall within this time frame as a start and end state. These two states are then interpolated between to create the smooth movement that we want. The reason we buffer these states is so that if a state is lost in transmission, we can use another state in the buffer. This will reduce our overall accuracy, but the client won't notice at all. Unfortunately, buffering these states is now adding an extra 100 milliseconds of time to when the player will see something happen on their screen. So even if a player was on LAN with near zero latency, there would still be a minimum of 100 milliseconds of delay between a player moving on their screen and then moving on your screen. This is a problem. Let's say a player shoots at an enemy at client time 1000 milliseconds. The firing information is packed into a user command and sent to the server. While the packet is on its way through the network, the server continues to simulate the world and the target might have moved to a different position by now. The player's input arrives at client time 1100 milliseconds and the server would not detect the hit, even though the player has aimed exactly at the target. The solution to this is a little bit complex. Remember that for every tick, the server is creating a new world state and sending it to the client. Well, the server should now save the last couple of seconds worth of states. What we can do then is, when a player shoots and the server receives the request, rewind all the players back to where they were at that point in time when the client performed the shot, essentially travelling back in time to see whether the player would have hit them or not. After the shot, the server moves all the objects back to where they were before. This happens in one tick, so none of the players can see this happening. Now when a player shoots, they will hit exactly what they're aiming at. There is a little downside to this though. Rewinding players mean there are cases where players on the receiving end feel a little bit cheated. As every player is predicting their position, they're essentially in the future. So if they go behind some cover as they're being shot, the server does not have them behind that cover yet. So the player may be hit when they felt like they were safe. This is simply a trade-off for players not having to lead shots and generally provides a fair game for everybody. That essentially covers most of the topics from multiplayer first-person shooter game. If you like this video, you should go watch this devlog. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.